Have you ever seen new technology or innovations roll out and thought to yourself, maybe this is my chance to get in early? For example, maybe you see artificial intelligence as an exciting new opportunity and you want to get in early. Well, this video is for you. The question to ask yourself is this, is there an actual early mover advantage to those who get in early in any kind of new industry or any new technological innovation? Now, I can tell you from my own experience, I've been in early in a couple technological developments. Uh, the one that comes to mind immediately is Clubhouse. Uh, I was in Clubhouse when it was only a few months old before it became public, and I was excited about it. I helped evangelize it during the pandemic, and it was an exciting thing, and it fizzled out really quickly. And then it happened again during the Web3 movement as crypto and NFT started popping. And there are certain cycles that happen in any technological innovation that are, I think are worthy of exploring. Uh, the Gartner Group uh, has this thing called the Gartner Hype Cycle. And they start with an innovation trigger down here at the bottom, and then it goes up until it hits the peak of inflated expectations, which is really high up here. And then it enters down into the trough of disillusionment, and then eventually into the slope of enlightenment until it reaches the plateau of productivity. Now, I'm a strong believer in the Gartner hype cycle because I think it represents how we as humans tend to um, overvalue or overhype, if you will, brand new innovations. So what often happens for those of us that get involved early is we don't have the staying power to last. So I've seen this happen. I was early in the blogging industry. I was early in the internet uh, when the internet first started. And so many companies that are really well known today were not the first. Let's start with Amazon. Amazon was not the first company on the planet to sell e-commerce products. They started with books. They scaled up until they dominated the entire world. Let's take Apple. Apple was not the first computer company. They definitely were not the first phone manufacturer. Yet today, Apple is one of the largest, most successful companies in the world. Okay, how about Google? Was Google the first search engine? Absolutely not. So, what does this tell us? Well, I think it tells us a couple things. First of all, there is certain advantages to getting in early. Because when you are early into an industry, you can essentially be seen by the few that are there as a thought leader. You have a chance to start a podcast or speak on topics when a lot of people are really interested in this. For example, when TikTok first came out, there were very few TikTok speakers. And there were just a few. Uh, same thing with Instagram. And those that got in early had a chance to stay in early um, and, 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 and really benefit from maybe about a year or two of opportunity that presented themselves. <clears throat> but here's where things get a little bit sticky. When you are in too early into any technological innovation, there's not a lot of people yet that are there. And there's often a lot of people that are skeptical and highly resistant. I saw this when I got into the Web3 space. There were a few true believers in NFTs and Web3, but a mass amount of skepticism. And what ended up happening was a lot of people ended up leaving because they, they didn't find it to be an exciting space to be in because there was a lot of pressure from the mainstream media, from other entities that look at crypto and NFTs as a threat, and they just decided to stop. And I even got to the point where I stopped my Web3 business podcast because it was getting pretty clear to me that this is going to be a longer ride than I was willing to take. So this is the part I think you have to process when you get in early is what is your time horizon? Are you just there to have fun and experiment for a couple of months? Are you a true believer? If so, are you willing to wait for years? Because I will tell you, I was in for almost two years in the Web3 space and was pretty obvious that Web3 was not going to go mainstream as fast as I had thought. So I decided I'm not going to pursue this anymore and I opened myself up to other opportunities. So the first challenge, again, to being early in any kind of niche is that there's gonna be a lot of skepticism. There's gonna be a lot of people who come and go. There's gonna be people who believe in the hype, quote unquote, but don't have the stamina or wherewithal to pass through the trough of disillusionment as there's a lot of pressure going on and as they struggle to figure out how to make 
a business out of this if they're an entrepreneur. So um, I'm not here to tell you you shouldn't consider going early, but I am here to tell you that I think you need to make sure you have your time horizons set right. It could take many years. It could take two, three, five years. And if you acknowledge that coming into it, then you can ask yourself, okay, um, am I willing to stick this out? Now, I'm here to tell you I think artificial intelligence is an anomaly because the adoption rate is happening faster than any technological innovation we've ever seen in our lifetime. But I'm also here to tell you that we're only a year into this AI revolution since ChatGPT launched on November 30th, 2022. And a lot of people who are going all in on AI will not survive. So what that means for you is if you still believe in something, but you're not one of the first, I think you should see this as an incredible green light opportunity. When I started Social Media Examiner, social media had been around for a long time. Uh, Twitter had been, been out since for years. LinkedIn had been out for years, and so had Facebook. I thought I was late when I started Social Media Examiner, but I realized I was actually still early when I have a long horizon viewpoint. So this is where I think not being first, not being super early, but maybe catching the second wave can be an incredible opportunity because you might notice that there are people who have lost their mojo. They've lost their stamina. They've been doing it for a few years, but you have a conviction that this is going to be a long-term trend. That's where you can come in and bring structure and discipline and your unique you to the, to the table to allow you to be successful. And I'm here to tell you, Social Media Examiner has been around since 2009. We're about to celebrate our 14th year because we were not first. We were not early. Even though it might seem like we were early, we came in about three years and there was hundreds and thousands of other bloggers that were blogging about social media. And now there are very, very few. So my question to you is, what are your views? How do you feel about getting in early when it comes to technological innovation? Do you believe it's an opportunity? Have you chased thing after thing after thing and it just hasn't worked? Have you considered whether it makes sense to maybe come in a little bit later along the line? I'm here to tell you that my conference, Social Media Marketing World, is still going well and strong despite the fact that I've been at this for a very, very long time. So if I've learned anything, I've learned maybe hold, 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 like they say in Braveheart, is kind of wise and wait for there to be a certain critical mass, but maybe a lack of leadership or a lack of opportunity in the marketplace and then go in and bring your unique you to the table. That's my thoughts. I would love to hear your thoughts. My name is Michael Stelzner. Thank you so much for watching today's video.